GB Pratt, founder and CEO of Modify Health. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining me uh, today uh, for this conversation. And uh, I'm really looking forward to learning more about you, uh, about your company, Modify Health. Uh, so please give us some kind of a context uh, to get started. Yeah, absolutely. And Praveen, thank you for having me. Uh, I've enjoyed the other guests that you've had. And uh, I really just appreciate an opportunity to be part of this forum. I uh, love what you're doing. Uh, as far as myself, uh, I've got a wife, Rachel. We've got three kids, Grace, Trey, and Drew. And uh, Grace is a sophomore in college, and uh, she's trying to live some normal sense of a college life through the pandemic. And then we've got two sons that are in high school, and uh, they are, believe it or not, going to class today. But uh, I'm sure we'll get the call at some point saying it's virtual only. Uh, 2020 has been an interesting year, to say the least, to be a parent. Um, but on the professional side, I've been in the GI space my entire career. Uh, most recently, I helped start EndoChoice, uh, running one of our three divisions before we sold it to Boston Scientific. And then I did stay at Boston Scientific for a couple of years uh, before founding Modify Health. And um, absolutely love being in the GI space. I love working with gastroenterologists. Uh, it's really been a good career choice for me uh, and my family. So. Um, I want to start by first uh, congratulating you on uh, the fundraise. You raised uh, $2 million in a Series A funding. Uh, that's phenomenal. Uh, and you did it uh, in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, and uh, that's even more impressive. Uh, so <laughs> how did all that happen? Tell us about it. Yeah. Uh, and it is an interesting time to try to, to do a capital raise uh, fundraising. And I remember even back at EndoChoice, we did our first round of funding uh, in 2009, right at a major economic downturn. So it uh, looks like I'm two for two in terms of startups. We're raising money at very interesting times. Um, and, and to me, one thing that was unique is uh, the VC firm that ultimately invested in us, I never even met him in person. Um, because of the pandemic, everything was done virtually. So it was probably one of the first Zoom only fundraisings uh, uh, out there. But, um, you know, there's a real appetite. Uh, Modify Health what we do is we treat chronic conditions uh, through nutritional therapy. We make it simple, effective, and profitable for GI practices. And there is a real recognition out there that um, food is medicine, getting to the root cause of chronic care conditions as opposed to treating symptoms. Um, that is a future in healthcare right now. And so we had a lot of interest uh, from VCs, uh, you know, in the VC community. And, um, you know, the growth that we've had over the last year has been phenomenal. So, um, you know, honestly, it, was, it wasn't very hard to raise the money. That was the good part. Mm -hmm. From the VC standpoint, you know, when, I, when they're looking at companies like yours, uh, what are they seeing uh, and what's the big picture here? Gastroenterologists are seeing a wide range of diseases and conditions, and the vast majority of these uh, are diagnosed or treated incredibly well through procedure, upper and lower endoscopy, or through medication pharma, right? The challenge is there are also conditions such as IBS, um, fatty liver, EOE, you could argue GERD, where the medications that we have today are not uh, providing the optimal outcomes that we want for patients, and nutritional therapy becomes an important part in a patient's success. And today, a gastroenterologist, they're going to give a patient um, handouts, educational materials. And so for IBS, they're going to talk about low FODMAP protocol. For fatty liver, they're going to talk about weight loss or EOE elimination followed by reintroduction. But we all know what happens. When that patient leaves the office, it is really, really challenging for them to adhere to these protocols unless they're getting encouragement on a frequent basis um, the outcomes are not exactly what we would want. Um, and that's where companies like Modify Health can step in, right? We can bridge the gap between the doctor seeing a patient today and that patient coming back in weeks or months. Um, we are there to help support that patient uh, and, and make sure we get um, really optimal outcomes. And we do it. The way that it works for us is that the patient is getting dietitian support. They're getting medically tailored meals delivered directly to the door. So these are medically tailored meals targeted to a specific disease state. And then we are leveraging technology. So the patient is using an app that engages with them on a daily basis, uh, again, to make sure that, that they can get through the protocol effectively. Mm -hmm. 
could you describe the process a little bit more uh, from the lens of a patient, uh, you know, who is reaching out to you and uh, from the lens of a physician or a GI practice uh, that wants to use you uh, as uh, an ancillary service? Yeah, and we've made it extremely simple. So uh, from a physician or provider's point of view, uh, when they've got a patient that they would like to recommend nutritional therapy, all they have to do is go in their electronic medical record and hit modify health, no different than they would sending a patient to any other referring provider, uh, or they can fax us a referral. Every single patient that gets sent to modify health will get a free consultation with one of our GI trained dietitians. Uh, and that's a big value to the patient. Um, during this consultation, they're gonna get education on the recommended protocol from the physician. Uh, they're going to get helpful materials such as snack ideas, dining guides, uh, more information on how the protocol works. And then we're giving that patient a choice. We say, look, if you'd like, you can try to do this program or protocol on your own. Uh, in some respects, good luck because it's challenging. Or if you'd like to not have to think about restocking your pantry, learning a new way to cook, and if you'd like to just focus on getting well and learning your trigger foods, you can enroll in our program and you'll get dietitian support. You'll get these medically tailored meals delivered on a weekly basis. And then the patient will use the app. Uh, they're indicating how they feel every day. And it really helps us because our dietitians can monitor trends and track the progress of that patient. Uh, at the end of the day, a report goes back to the gastroenterologist. No different than when they send a patient to go get blood work and they want the results back. When they send a patient to modify health, we are sending a final report uh, so they can keep tabs on their own patient. And when they come back, they know how they fared. What kind of results are uh, patients getting by using your service? Uh, if we take IBS as an example, 90% of the patients that get referred to us take us up on the free consultation. Uh, and of those, it's about 30% or just under a third that end up enrolling in the program. And as we look at IBS, 79% um, of the patients that go through our program would report significant clinical relief, or we would say life-changing relief. Mm -hmm. And the way that we're measuring that, we look at the IBS symptom severity score or the IBS SSS. Uh, the SSS score, it really looks at what is your pain uh, frequency, duration, uh, your bowel movement, quality of life impact. And we're measuring that baseline before we start the program, after two weeks of elimination, and then at the end of the protocol, which is typically around eight weeks. And, um, and, and really, we shouldn't be surprised that 79% of patients report great relief because we modify health. We don't invent these protocols, right? Low FODMAP has been around for a long time for IBS patients. We just make it very simple for them. Um, and so it, it works. And, you know, beyond the statistics, to me, it's, it's really about the stories. It's about the patients. You know, we've had teachers tell us that they can go back to school, right, that weren't able to previously. We've had parents talk about being able to spend more time with their kids and just engage with their kids like they haven't been able to for years. Um, we had one here recently. If you talk about being vulnerable, she said that going through the program helped her feel attractive for the first time in years. She had severe bloating mm -hmm. and that it's helped her self-esteem in her marriage. Um, that's, you know, that's what gets us up in the morning. I, do you know Simon Sinek um, yes. at all? Yeah. 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 I mean, Simon Sinek, he's a great business author and, and a business speaker. He talks about the importance of knowing why you do what you do. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'll say at Modify Health, I'm thankful. Our why is extremely clear, right? Our mission is to change lives by making food as medicine simple, effective, and enjoyable for patients. And, and we get the opportunity to do that. Fantastic. Uh, what's the economic model? Uh, who pays you and mm -hmm. uh, how, how does it all work? Yeah, right now, patients are, are paying. So... Uh, it's not reimbursed by insurance because it's food that could be used for general consumption. Um, but the great thing is it's not a new expense for a patient, right? All of us today, we are spending money on food, whatever we cook at home. And the younger you are, the more you're eating out or getting meals delivered. And so for most of our patients, um, it's cost neutral. Uh, it might be a bit of a premium at that, but I think it's a very, very good value. If you've struggled with a chronic condition for years, mm -hmm. to be able to learn your trigger foods, gain control of your symptoms in a matter of weeks, uh, it's well worth it and the value's there. Uh, I will add that we've priced it very similarly to other meal delivery services. 
And so breakfasts are $8. Uh, entrees, lunches, and dinners are $12. Shipping is free throughout all 50 states in the United States. Um, so it's really, really very good value for the patient. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what's the benefit for the GI practices uh, who are using you, yeah. referring patients to you? Yeah, I'd say first and foremost, there's a uh, just a benefit of taking some of you know, what could be challenging or frustrating patients and, and giving an option, right? Um, making it simple for the patient and helping with outcomes, patient satisfaction. It does save time because our dietitians will provide some of that education for the patient. Uh, but there is an ancillary income component to this as well. Uh, and we think that's important. And so the way the ancillary component works or, or portion of this works is uh, practices can buy these meals at a discount they hold them in virtual inventory. So we are not putting refrigerators on the practice and asking them to inventory these things on site. It's held in a virtual inventory. And then when they refer the patient to us, our dietitian does the consult. If and when the patient enrolls, uh, we will pull from that practice's virtual inventory, charging the patient the full retail rate. And so the average patient's worth about $150 in income to the practice. And the great thing is that goes in perpetuity. And so if that patient at the end of the protocol continues to use us just for ongoing convenience, um, like they would a Freshly, a HelloFresh, any other meal delivery service, uh, that practice will continue to generate income uh, for as long as that patient's buying meals. And so uh, it really is a good opportunity for the practice. I love the work that you're doing. Uh, it's uh, you know, chronic disease management and you're using food as medicine. Uh, and uh, you're probably reversing uh, a whole lot of GI conditions. Uh, and it's great for all these patients who are going through your program. Uh, now, if I, if, if I have to think of it in a really odd way, like look at this entire thing purely from, uh, you know, the existing dominant uh, economic model in the healthcare system, it mm -hmm. seems to go against uh, that grain. Uh, because the existing healthcare system pays for more services. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm really curious to hear your response on something like this. Well, yeah, I think it's a great question. And, and I would say it does go against the grain of how our healthcare system was built. And I'll say was in the past tense. Um, and, and certainly there's still a lot of fee for service going on. But we would say that we are 100% blind to where healthcare is heading. Um, and even if you take it from a GI practice side, we're not reducing the income or, or you know, uh, revenue that they would make for these patients. Uh, they're still gonna come back for their follow-up visit. Uh, in fact, I would argue the opposite because it's an ancillary income opportunity. It, it might be more income per patient. What we are doing, as I mentioned, is we're filling that gap between the provider seeing the patient today and when they come back weeks or months later. Um, and we're just helping with that care in that in-between time. And, uh, you know, as we get more into value-based medicine, uh, treating chronic conditions at the root cause as opposed to treating symptoms is absolutely where healthcare is going. Um, it's interesting. We've got a couple of healthcare systems right now that have approached us, and they're asking us to do pilots on different disease states, diabetes, heart disease, uh, even post-surgical, looking at lowering readmission rates. Uh, because a lot of healthcare systems, they're becoming the insurance company, right? There's this real blend if you're taking the Kaiser model um, to value-based medicine. In insurance companies are looking at this because they're taking long-term risk on patients. So are healthcare systems. And so, you know, I don't know that there's a place for Modify Health five to 10 years ago. Um, but a lot of things have come about that makes this a really attractive model right now. Um, and I think we're absolutely on the right side of medicine, the right side of healthcare. And we're excited to be a part of the future. GI has done such a great job. When you look at all the services that, that they've captured and, and done really well at, and, and I would say to the benefit of the patient, right, between anesthesia and pathology and ambulatory surgery centers and research and banding and, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. There will be a category around, you know, chronic care management or certainly around uh, dietary management, nutritional therapy. And someone is going to own these patients, right? And we believe 100% that it should be the GI community. And that's what we're here to support. And so uh, I would say that what we're doing at Modify Health falls very much in line with other CCM, um, 
you know, programs that, that GI groups would be looking into. And uh, so I think there's a big opportunity to extend uh, as a service line into CCM. GP, thank you very much for uh, sharing all these insights. Uh, was there anything else uh, that you wanted to add? No, Praveen, I just want to say thank you. I love this forum and what you're doing. I look forward to your book comes out uh, tomorrow. Is that right? Or in two yeah. days? Where's yeah, book on, on, on Wednesday. On uh, Wednesday. So yeah. uh, good luck with that. Just appreciate what you're doing. And, um, you know, we're here to serve and excited about what we're doing. Thank you. And I wish you and uh, your team at Modify Health uh, all the best. You got it, Praveen. Thank you so much.